and we could see that the operations in our LXY, this plus, is coming from the operation plus in our space Y. The alpha times in LXY is coming from the alpha times in Y. The norm in LXY is coming from, well, kind of both norms. This is the norm in Y, whereas this is the norm in X. So it depends on both of them. So you see how structure in X and Y implies the structure in LXY. Okay, can it get any better? Well, of course, a Banner space would be better, so we need completeness. Um, how do we get completeness of L of X and Y? Well, we probably need completeness for X and Y, or maybe just one of them. Let's see. L of X, Y is complete, hence Banach space, if Y is complete, hence Banach space. Okay, so that's interesting. It's completely independent of the completeness of X. It's all about Y. Proof. So let the space Y with its addition alpha times and its particular Y norm be complete. We have to show that L of X, Y is complete. To show this, we have to show that every Cauchy sequence in L, X, Y is convergent and the limit is again in LXY. So let's take an arbitrary Cauchy sequence in LXY. <clears throat> so we have to show that our Cauchy sequence converges in the norm of LXY. Let me write a little L down here just to make that clear to an operator A that is again in LXY. Okay, that's the job. Right, so this is where we have to spell it out, what it means for the sequence to be a Cauchy sequence in LXY. So remember, means for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists an N zero in the natural numbers such that for all M and N greater than or equal to N zero, the norm of A M minus A N in this L norm, it's just the usual operator norm, less than epsilon. So let's spell it out what this operator norm is. It's the supremum uh, of all x's with norm less than or equal to 1, or we could just say equal to 1, uh, am minus an applied to x. Okay, and then that be less than epsilon. Of course, by the way, how we define the sum or likewise difference of two operators, this can be rewritten as AMX minus ANX. And then if you read this from the top, it says that your sequence ANX or AMX as you like is a Cauchy sequence in Y. This here is the Y norm and that holds for every X. In X with norm equal to 1. And that's exactly why completeness of Y is crucial here. Here you can see it. We say that Y is complete, so let's use that fact. So Y is complete. So we have limits in Y. So for every such X in X that has norm equal to one, 
there exists a limit, let's just call it little y, and y such that a n x, which was this Cauchy sequence in y, now converges to y in the sense of convergence in y. <clears throat> let's write this as y is equal to limit n goes to infinity a n x now because a n is linear it is compatible with plus n alpha times so that means um, if instead of x you plug in the sum of two x's and then apply the operator a n you could as well apply operator a n to each of the little x's and then add same with alpha times just repeating linearity but of course also the limit is compatible with these two operations right so if you take the limit of a sum of two convergent sequences or whether you take the limit of each of the sequences and then add you get the same and the same with alpha times of course what I'm saying is that this map that takes your little x and produces the little y is compatible with plus and alpha times or in other words is linear well if it's a linear map from capital X to capital Y, let's just name it. Uh, why not name it capital A? So instead of Y, we can just write A of X. And that's why we can write that norm of A and X minus A X, which was the Y norm goes to zero as n goes to infinity well because this is just y and this is what we're seeing here anyway so we are on a good way in our proof it remains to be shown that two things hold first thing is a n converges to that operator a in the sense of our L norm and secondly the limit is in L x y well then we indeed have that our Cauchy sequence is a convergent sequence with limit again inside the same set L of x and y well let's start with A we, we have to look at this difference a n minus a and then the l norm and by definition this is just the supremum of a n x minus a x i'm skipping one step here you know which one uh, in the y norm and we're running over all little x's that have norm equal to one and we have to show that we can make this as small as we want by making n as large as necessary okay but we almost have that if you look up here what we have in this Cauchy sequence argument well let me just label this step by star again then we almost have that that we want um, all we have to do in star is to send little m to infinity which is perfectly possible because the statement holds for all m that are larger than some n zero so now we know what happens if we send m to infinity we know that then a m x converges to a x and in the limit the inequality still holds so for every epsilon greater than zero there is an n zero such that for all n bigger than that your a n x is closer to a x than um, f epsilon 
but that's exactly what we need down here. So this is exactly the, 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 the expression that becomes as small as you want if n is as large as necessary. So we can say that this goes to zero if n goes to infinity. Okay, so check. Now about point B. Um, I mean, that's, that's also not too difficult. By the triangle inequality in L, x, y, we can bound the operator norm of A by the operator norm of A n plus the norm of the difference of the two. But we know that this is finite because a n is a bounded operator and that this is finite, well, even as small as you want, so smaller than epsilon for n large enough. So you can certainly conclude that this is a finite number, hence showing that A is an LXY. All right, believe it or not, we finished the proof. So I, I think you've seen uh, how completeness of Y comes in and is crucial here, and completeness of X is nowhere needed. Um, and I hope you can also see that the way we did this proof is essentially the same how we proved that R2 is complete using that just R is complete. So there we took this um, sequence of vectors and from this being a Cauchy sequence we concluded that every single component of it forms a Cauchy sequence and then went on to these limits and showed that this vector of limits is again the limit in the new uh, sense uh, and th this proof is just the same just instead of vectors we now have operators so instead of looking at component one two three we look at point x which is running through capital x um, but the rest of the argument is, is pretty much the same as what we saw before all right, let's finish this discussion by one more definition. So for a norm space X, call L of X comma F the dual space of X. Uh, notation x dash. Now here f is the field, either the real or complex numbers, over which your norm space x is a vector space. So this is where the little alphas are coming from. And from the theorem that we just proved, we know that independently whether x is complete or not, this is always complete because f is complete. Okay. And maybe one last comment here. The elements, that I will write f for one, of the dual space x are obviously by the definition linear operators from x into the field of real or complex numbers, so they produce numbers, are linear, um, and are called linear functionals. So the fact that they produce numbers instead of other complicated vectors is reflected by the um, extra word functionals here and this is where the word functional 
analysis comes from.